in March, the U.S. government slapped a massive 266% import duty on Chinese steel because steelmakers in China have been overproducing and dumping their excess product on our shores at depressed prices. Since then, some of those tariffs have been raised even further, as high as 500%. The stocks of American steelmakers have roared higher, as they should. That's why I think it's important to look over the quarter of Nucor, the big U.S.-based steelmaker reported last Thursday, their first full quarter since these anti-dumping duties took effect. On the one hand, Nucor posted a nice three-cent earnings beat off a 70-cent basis, up 87% year-over-year, thanks in large part to higher prices. On the other hand, the company's revenues came in a little lighter than expected, declining by 2.6% year-over-year. Still, management's commentary about the next quarter was quite positive. The stock gives you 2.8% solid yield at these levels. Nevertheless, Nucor actually got hit on the news with its share price falling nearly two bucks last Thursday in the wake of the results. However, I think that's more of a function of the fact that the stock had run up so dramatically. Now nearly 55% from its January lows. Yes, this may have gotten a bit too aggressive. Short term, long term, they look low to me. Don't take it from me. Let's check in with John Ferriola. He's the chairman CEO of Nucor. Learn more about the quarter and where the company's headed. Mr. Ferriola, welcome back to Mad Money. Glad to be here, Jim. All right, John, it looks like uh, that both lower imports combined with taking market share created this very good performance. Can that continue? It absolutely can, can continue, Jim. Uh, the great performance that we had in the second quarter, which was basically our EPS tripled over uh, first quarter, and we, by the way, expect to see that same strength continuing into the third quarter. But that was a result of many things. You mentioned a couple of those things. But I also would add that it's a result of our strategy, our long-term strategy for profitable growth. And, uh, you know, we're confident that that will be able to continue. Now, one of the things that we had the privilege of was to visit your Louisiana factory, which is a brand new way to make steel in this country. It looks like that one of the things that, Kate, that made it so that you had a good quarter and will continue is the yield from that plant. Can you fill in our viewers about how that plant ended up and how much it's making for you? Well, we started out, as you recall, with that uh, plant having some issues on the production side with equipment that was unrelated to the technology. All of that has been cleared up, and I'm very pleased to say that both our Louisiana plant and our Trinidad plant today are performing at 100% with excellent quality and world-class cost structures. I believe we are the lowest cost producer of DRI anywhere in the world today. So the plants are working great. All right. Now, I noticed that you have a very interesting joint venture in Mexico. Happens to be right near my house, Guanajuato. And a lot of people are questioning, well, why are you doing it in Central Highlands? You say, well, that's where the cars are being made. Talk to us about that joint venture, because I know that the highest quality steel is used by the highest quality imports, and that's where they're making them. No doubt about it. The... Uh, when you look at the auto market growth in Mexico, it's been phenomenal over the last five years. And when you look going forward, uh, by the year 2020, 40 percent of all new vehicle launches will be made in Mexico. And our new plant will be right in the middle of all of this new automotive production that's being built. And it's really a credit to our team and to the quality and capabilities of our steel that we were partner, we were able to partner with JFE Steel from Japan. They are, without a doubt, the premier, premier uh, producer of automotive-grade steels. Partnering with them is a real credit to our team and to the products that we're producing. And this line will produce exposed automotive galvanized product for the automotive market in Mexico. We're very excited about it. Okay, uh, we have Klaus Kleinfeld a lot on, uh, from Alcoa on, and he's always talking about the, alumin the light weighting of cars, aluminization. There's some things in cars that can never use aluminum, right, sir? Oh, that's absolutely correct, and and I would, uh, I would, I would respectfully argue with him, saying that, listen, as we continue to advance high strength steels for applications in the automotive world, when you look at all of the factors that are involved in deciding what product to use, particularly the, the environmental concerns and the recyclability of of our product, I'm confident that although there will be some products and some automobiles that tend to use aluminum they will not take a major part of our market. We're, we're confident that with our advanced high-strength steels from Nucor and from the industry, we will be, uh, we'll be able to supply the automotive market with exposed product for quite some time to come. All right, I want to talk about uh, China and uh, to some degree Korea, too. It looks like that with the levies, it finally seems like it's a level playing field. I know it wasn't. Have the, has the U.S. government done enough to be able to make it so that literally you're finally uh, on equal footing? The upgraded trade laws that, uh, that you and I spoke about last year, 
You might recall we were talking at that time saying whether or not we were going to wait and see whether they actually helped. Well, they did. They're working. When you look at the imports into the United States today, the first five months of 2016, they are down about 31 percent compared to the same period last year. Now, that said, there's still a lot of work to be done. Overcapacity remains a major challenge for our industry. But I'll tell you, things are looking better in terms of our ability to work with our allies and with the United States government to finally get something done on overcapacity. Today, there's about 700 million tons of excess steel capacity. 400 million of that, of that overcapacity, Jim, resides in China. And I am confident that working with the government and through the industry and the OECD, we will begin to finally address it, just as we were able to successfully address the trade laws last year. All right, last question. I want to know, uh, people always feel that if you put tariffs on, the actual consumers of steel are going to be very upset. I'm not hearing a peep out of anyone. Is it just because it, maybe your steel's higher quality or it's just not that much of a chore for them? I think there's several factors, but at the end of the day, I believe that our customers understand that enforcing our trade laws results in a stronger economic potential growth for the country as well as for the individual country uh, companies. They want companies like Nucor to be around to supply their needs well into the future. And I think they also recognize that if we don't stand up and protect our trade laws today, they might be in the same boat with finished products several years from now as we are with the primary products today. Jim, when you look at our performance in the second quarter, what you see is Nucor being Nucor, doing what we always do, using our unrivaled position of strength to profitably grow earnings for our customers, our, our, our shareholders, and our teammates. It's what we've been doing for almost five decades, and that was something we'll continue to do well into the future. Well, I'm confident, Jim, that our best years are still ahead of us. All right, very good. Thank you so much to John Furrier, Chairman, President, CEO of Nucor. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank I, you, Jim. I agree with him. I'm confident, too. Plus, there's a really good yield while you wait. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.